welcome back my beautiful friends into another video in this video i'm going to be talking about ssrf or server side request for duty vulnerability and how can real hackers or bug bounty hunters or even pen testers use to find this vulnerability in real world application well if you're interested in learning more about this vulnerability please click the like button and subscribe button I'll let you get started. What is actually server side request forgery? So the attacker tried to send some request or some malicious request to the server and the server will uh, process the request of the attacker maybe getting some link or maybe getting some malicious code. So the server will try to fetch some data from the user input without any restrictions. For example, the attacker tried to access some internal resources, for example, the 127.0.01, or maybe trying to access some AWS uh, private key, or maybe trying to access some ETC password. So the server doesn't uh, have any restrictions and give the attacker access to these resources without any restrictions. So this thing can come in so many different forms. For example, right here, we're having this lab, uh, it's a source code tool. If we try to give it, for example, evil.com, we click go, you can see that it's trying to get us the source code of evil.com. But what the attacker can actually do is try to send 127.01, which is an internal IP address. So if you click OK right here and try to send go, you can see we have in a parameter called URL that are including the local host right here to uh, fetch the data of uh, the local host of the server. For example, we send this to repeater and we go back to repeater and we click send. You can see that we have access to the internal IP address. For example, you can see you have gained access to 127.01. This should only visible by within internal network. So this is how actually um, SSRF works. So this is just the basic example how SSRF works and it can come in too many forms. For example, this lab right here, it's a PDF screenshot tool. So it can be in any form. For example, uh, for you can as you can see right here, we can include a URL and click go. Okay, and it will generate us some PDF file. For example, if you click this right here, let's just, uh, okay, if you click go, you can see it's generating a PDF file with the URL or a screenshot of this URL right here. But what, can, what we can actually do is uh, try to inject some uh, malicious website or try to inject or try to access to the local host. For example, if you try doing one to seven and click go, it's supposed to create a PDF file for us. For example, you can see you gained access to one to seven. This should be only visible within the internal network. And we're not gonna stop right here. We're gonna try to do some uh, internal port. For example, we're gonna do port scanning on 8080 and click go and see if we may get into all the resources. You can see, uh, you can see we're having Apache Tomcat, which is an internal uh, configuration or default configuration uh, page of Apache server. So let's just go into the next lab, which is trying to access uh, to this uh, application. You can see access localhost has been blocked. So this application actually have some restriction against the localhost. For example, if you try sending this thing right here, we click request, you can see the host is not allowed. But what the developer may don't know, there is multiple ways you can uh, send the localhost. For example, we can do just 0.0.01 we can click send you can see that we can access to the application we can also do before we go ahead and finish this video i want to talk about this website which is luru.shop which is a bug bounty and ethical hacking hub when you can learn about ethical hacking and bug bounty plus a 24 7 chat support as you can see right here bug bounty course plus a 24 7 chat support when you can learn ethical hacking and bug bounty plus you can ask any question or any any confusion or any misunderstandings you have and I will personally come and answer all your questions as you can see right here we have a one-on-one -on -one private coaching program when I will teach you personally about ethical hacking and bug bounty by practice we're gonna go into live hacking session and teach you on real world example by going into real websites and try to teach you by practice because learning by practice is the best way to learn anything well, if you're interested, there is a link on the description. You can click it to know more about HTTP and do it like this and click 
okay as you can see zero 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 it's worked for us perfectly as you can see right here you can access to one to seven point one that should only uh visible within uh, internal network maybe if you try doing uh like this uh we go back to the zero one we try to include some http zero on port 8080 and click request you can see we're having the apache uh, default uh, home page as you can see right here this uh, html page so this is how you can actually bypass and there is so many multiple ways to bypass the local host for example we go ssrf bypass a uh, local host and we click uh, sorry local host right here okay we can uh, open these uh, links right here you can see that we have multiple ways to bypass the SSRF restrictions you can see that this domain right here is try to access the 192.1.7.1 which is a local IP address uh, we can also uh, send this link right here let's just try it out go back PDF screenshots of uh, this website and including this thing right here and we click OK. As you can see, that this website also works. It's sending to 127.1. You should only be visible within internal network right here. As you can see, it works perfectly. Let's look for other payloads. Uh, for example, we're having nep.io. Let's try this one right here. We can try nep.io. We can do nap.io and do 127.0.0.01 and points.nap.io. So this nap.io, what is happening right here? So this domain right here is try to do some pointing into this IP right here. So if you try to go into the terminal and we do, uh, sorry, if we do like this, we do dig and we click OK, you can see that this IP right here or this domain is pointing to 127.0.01. So if we try to do, uh, for example, 2 and we click enter, you can see it's pointing to 2. So this allows us to bypass the local host restrictions. And we'll just move on to the next lab, which is saying access allowed only on, uh, for example, this thing right here heracles.ctf.ao.com let's just try to do a normal local host of course it's not gonna work because you can see the restriction right here but what we can actually try is try to do uh, some open right direct we try to do copy right here and try to come back and we're gonna try to do like this we found an open right direct into this website so we found an open right direct into this website for example you can see it's only allowed to this uh, subdomain right here is the same subdomain but it have some uh, open right direct right here vulnerability what we can do is we can simply try to do one two seven try to do right direct so this application when it redirects us into the local host this application will do a fetch through a local host and will give us the data of the local host HTTP going 127.1.0.01 and click request. You can see it's perfectly worked through the open right direct right here. You can see uh, you have gained access to 127. This should only visible to internal host. It's the same thing if we try uh, doing, uh, for example, like this 127.0.01 and doing like this port 8080 and doing http okay and try to do request you can see we have access to the apache default configuration file right here so this is how you can actually bypass and why i recommend to you when having all these you can read uh, these uh, files right here we can bypass using so many different ways for example trying to do a nep.io as i showed you in the previous example try by doing a pointing uh, this ip right here or this domain is trying to point uh, into a local host IP so we can bypass the filters of this application and we can also try for example in this uh, PDF PDF screenshot tool you can see that this it's include a domain for example if we do evil and go you can see 
it's trying to include a domain into this application. And there is some application, they include the full name into the PDF. When you click generate PDF or generate an invoice, it's trying to generate an invoice for you and include into this invoice some data inside this invoice. For example, it includes the full name, it includes the, uh, the address of your, uh, of your address, of course. So let me give you an example. For example, you may have in a full name uh, that is being reflected into the domain or it's being reflected into uh, the PDF file. What you can actually try to do is you copy this thing right here, because if we try to do, uh, for example, we just save this and we copy path, go back to, go back right here and we click save, we can see this file is included, the etc password. Why? Because if we go back right here into our code, you can see that this iframe is trying to include file.etc.password. Uh, so when the application try to actually uh, do an including, so when the application try to include your name into the PDF file or trying to generate a PDF file and include your name with this malicious code, it will actually do a remote code execution and try to get the, uh, get the etc password configuration file. So. This is how you can actually get an SSRF vulnerability and these are the basics and the techniques to find SSRF vulnerability. This is the end of the video. If you have any question or I have any misunderstanding, you can post them on the comment section. And also if you have any suggestions for the next video, you can type them on the comment section. Thank you for watching this video. And I also included the one-on-one coaching program and the bootcamp link on the description. If you're interested, go to the description, click on the link to know more about this. So thank you so much for watching this video. See you in the next one.